Okay, hi everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Say hi in the chat. Um, we've just gone live with our first ever Whiskey Makes Me Happy Hour. Um, I see some people saying hello, so I'm gonna take that as a good sign that uh, I am live and that you can hear and see me. So welcome, um, my name is Mark. I am the founder of Whiskey Brother and one of the owners, and uh, I'm coming to you live from Johannesburg from my whiskey cupboard um, on a quite a miserable Jobu day. Um, lots of highs coming in the chats. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I am absolutely blown away by the number of people. We have currently 184 people watching us. Um, when we kind of when we concocted this idea a few days ago, we thought, well, if we could get 20, 30 people, you know, we'll be happy. Um, and we've had 355 register, and at the moment, uh, approximately 190 watching, um, which is you know, which is awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, I'd love to know where you guys are from. So if you're from Joburg or South Africa, or whatever, just put a comment so we can kind of get an idea of where everyone's watching from. Um, I see a few names that I know are actually not even South African and coming from overseas. So uh, yeah, thanks guys for, for tuning in. Um, I Firstly, before I start and we start talking about whiskey, I just want to say that I hope wherever you are that you and your families are safe. Uh, these are obviously quite difficult times, and uh, the intention here is to provide a bit of a distraction, right? So um, uh, make, you know, just some semblance of normalcy, talk about whiskey, uh, do what we love, and uh, let's just forget about the crazy world out there for a few minutes. Um, but we really, wherever you are, uh, we hope you, your family, your friends, you're safe, uh, you're sane, and uh, you're staying healthy. So... Um, yeah, I mean, that leads me to the Whiskey Makes Me Happy Hour. Uh, and again, the idea here is to provide a distraction. Um, you know, in terms of the Whiskey Brother guys, the family, we, you know, most of what we do is talking about whiskey. So, um, you know, at the moment we're unable to do that. The shop is closed, the bar is closed. Uh, we are not running any more tastings at the moment because of the lockdown. And so this is an opportunity for us to do what we do. Um, we miss you guys. We miss the community. We miss doing what we love. Uh, and hopefully you miss us to some degree. Tell us if you miss us. And uh, yeah, even if you don't miss us directly, maybe you miss talking about whiskey with your friends. And this is a good opportunity to do that. We've got someone coming in from Botswana. We've got Ireland drinking a rare breast. That is awesome. Uh, so cool to see so many different people tuning in. Um, so we've always wanted to do video content, to be honest. I think like most, you know, most, I guess, businesses, companies, uh, it's a cool thing to do. We feel we've got a lot of cool content. Uh, we're, you know, always traveling for whiskey. We're attending shows. And so we've always wanted to do video content to, you know, kind of share and talk and engage. And uh, it's taken, unfortunately, a global crisis to give us the push we needed, like so many others in the same position. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're locked in at home, like most of you. And this is a good opportunity to, uh, you know, to share a dram. So please pour a whiskey. I see someone saying, um, I saw someone saying, so red breast, they're pouring. There's some Bernie Moss um, in your glass. Great. Pour a dram. Uh, it will make watching me a lot more tolerable. So, you know, I am really sorry. The downside of this is that you have to see me for most of this. Uh, I am your host for this afternoon. Um, but we do have some other faces to kind of break the monotony. And uh, hopefully this is informative, hopefully it's entertaining and you enjoy it. And if that's the case, then we'll do this again next week. And uh, we can pick some other topics, get some other guests on. And hopefully it goes well enough and there's demand and we'll actually just continue this. This is easy enough that on a, in a weekly basis, people can tune in and we can have a bit of a whiskey chat. So uh, welcome. I see the numbers now are on about 220 people. Uh, that, is, that is crazy. Um, thank you really everyone to, to tuning in. Um, in terms of the platform, so we're using something called Crowdcast. Uh, I, I just mentioned it because if there is any issue, just come back to this URL, right? So they, occasionally technology uh, disappoints us. Uh, and obviously being in South Africa as well, access to bandwidth occasionally is, is a struggle. So if there are any issues and I freeze uh, or you disappear or something happens, just come back to this URL and we'll pick up from where we left off. Um, somebody's saying they're cooking whiskey, cooking whiskey, okay. Uh, I think that's Evan Williams, single barrel, nice choice of whiskey. Um, whiskey by the three-year-old, awesome, the seven, uh, sorry, the three ships. Um, yeah, so in terms of this, I'm not sure if it's what you expected. Uh, you will have to watch me for most of the time. Um, we have too many people for everyone just to connect, but we do have a poll going um, just to be a little bit more interactive. We've got the chat on the side. 
Uh, I click on the poll and I just see uh, most people think this is a good excuse to drink whiskey. So that's awesome. And that's what we're looking to provide. Um, again, hopefully uh, people are not too worried if I screw up, which gives me a little bit of, uh, a little bit of comfort. So thank you. Um, so, you know, as a, as a, assuming we do this regularly, um, the idea is to maybe have a standing segment when we, uh, when we talk about news. Whiskey news, but at the truth is at the moment, there isn't too much whiskey news to talk about. Um, most of the distilleries are still producing, but tours have shut down um, for obvious reason. I was in um, I was in Scotland three and a half weeks ago, uh, and at the time, ben, um, Glenfiddich and Balvini, um, the William Grant's distilleries shut their doors to tours, which is highly unusual. Glenfiddich do tours seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. Um, and uh, so they've closed their doors. And since then, the last obviously you know, three weeks since then, everyone else has, has followed suit. Most of the producers are still producing, so they're still making whiskey. Um, a lot of them are actually now producing, you know, uh, ethanol for the use in hand sanitizer. Uh, and we'll actually talk to Andy about that, um, trying to, you know, obviously contribute to, uh, I guess, the, the war on the coronavirus, but uh, and the lack of, you know, uh, I guess, sanitizer. But um, yeah, the distilleries are, are distilling, but at the moment there's just nothing else happening. So, you know, we've seen new releases just being put on hold. We're seeing a ton of events uh, being canceled. So Spirit of Speyside has, has been canceled. Uh, Fajil has been canceled. Uh, the Keepers of the Quake uh, induction ceremony has been canceled. Um, so unfortunately it's a, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs. Hopefully this, this clears soon and we can kind of get back to uh, back to where we were um, for the sake of whiskey and just for the sake of general humanity. Um, I'm quite keen to, so that you don't just have to look at me, I'm quite keen to uh, bring Neil on. So uh, if everyone everyone should know Neil, I'll introduce him. I'm just gonna bring him up here on the screen. Uh, while he's being brought up, I see someone say, uh, just poured a Glenlivet Madura, awesome. That was Andre. Um, We've got Wild Turkey. Uh, Kevin is saying there's some news about Ardbeg releasing the five-year-old. Yep. The news actually was out a few weeks ago, but it, it, it has kind of hit mainstream. Interesting to see what you know when that will be released, though. I think they may, might delay the release of that. Someone's drinking a Jamison castmate, Mike, followed by an old Pulteney. Um, just seeing where Neil is. Okay, Neil's accepting. Here we go. Hello, Neil. How's it, Mark? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, good man. Long time no see. Long time. That's a nice uh, looking set of shells behind you. Thank you. Thank you. I purchased them off some mug who moved overseas some years ago. What an idiot. He really let that go. Yeah, he did. Um, so, uh, I mean, if anybody doesn't know you, do you just want to quickly introduce yourself? Um, sure. My name is Neil Patterson. I'm Mark's uh, right hand man. Uh, when he moved over to the UK, I bought shares in the business. And a short six years later, we were closing our doors. <laughs> yeah, let's get to that. So um, in general, are you good? Are the family's good? Yeah, everyone's good. No complaints. As you can see, I've got more than enough whiskey to see me through at least the next uh, few weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll start uh, if, uh, if it goes on longer than that. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, you know, the reason you're here and sharing the, the screen with me is because uh, it, it didn't feel right celebrating alone. So I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you congratulations for the Whiskey Brother win for Single re uh, Outlet Retailer of the Year, Icons of Whiskey. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate the, 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 the obviously, shit, I'm right back at you. Congratulations to you. <laughs> I feel like a little bit of a hollow victory uh, given the current circumstances. Uh, yeah. Obviously, still part of it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, um, you know, every year the, the Whiskey Magazine, which is an international publication, has uh, their kind of annual awards. They've got the World Whiskey Awards, which is all about the whiskeys, the taste, the flavors, and who wins, etc. And then they've got the Icons of Whiskey. So the Icons of Whiskey recognizes bars and industry folk and brand ambassadors, etc., uh, South Africa won four global titles. Uh, Whiskey Brother somehow pipped a win, and we got uh, the you know in, in essence the best single outlet whiskey shop in the world, which is unbelievable. Um, Neil, do you want to tell the guys uh, or the people watching uh, where uh, where we were when we heard the news? Yeah, sure. I mean, so obviously the last week uh, has probably been one of the most surreal of my life, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other people that have joined us today 
completely agree with that. Um, you know, this time last week, I was literally finishing up deliveries for what was the busiest online week Whiskey Brothers ever had. For obvious reasons, everybody's stocking up for 21 days. Uh, you know, being stuck at home with the family, no offense to the families, but everybody needs a, a break sometimes. Whiskey obviously allows us to achieve that. Um, and yeah, I mean, then we obviously convened at the bar uh, just before six o'clock, just before we went to uh, and essentially, you know, heard the great news. And literally within five minutes, we're, we're, we're closing the doors to the bar while doing a fire sale on some of our fine wares, including this awesome beer, holy smokes. Uh, it's ten percent alcohol. It's got. It's used. They use pita barley to produce it. It's been ten, uh, 10 months maturing in a bourbon barrel. It's awesome. It's a. Uh, I'm doing a classic half and half here. Um, well, it's hardly a classic half and half. It's a three ships Moscato cask finish and a ten percent. Uh, it looks like beer. a. Full, it looks like a full and full. Yeah, well, I mean, I've just started, dude. Do you want me to get booze before the show? Come on. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. So. I'll jump in there. So, yeah, I mean, in incredibly surreal. We, we literally closed the doors, sat down, poured ourselves what was, you know, who knows, you know, a beer and, and, a, and a, pint, a pint and a, and a whiskey and started chatting and, and, you know, just talking about the, you know, the last few years and how amazing, you know, the journey's been and, and what a twist the last, obviously, few weeks have been. Only to be interrupted by a local uh, soap star uh, who came in and, uh, and I think she called you an arsehole, Marky. I'm sorry. She did. Got him there. Um, but don't worry, I stood up for Mark and told her to bugger off, and she did promptly. <laughs> we didn't have any names, but it was a, a really interesting end to a really interesting week. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so, you know, bittersweet moment, um, getting some awesome news that, you know, in, in well, in theory, we've been working, you know, we've been working for years towards. Um, a real testament to the Whiskey Brother team and the family and what we do. So we're really proud of, of, of what we've achieved. And uh, in a while, I've got everyone here just to say thank you. I mean, the, the, so another, there's a lot of, I want to say sadness in the air. We were, we were looking past that. But, you know, since we won the award, we haven't also been able to see kind of the team and just have a whiskey and, you know, say congratulations. Uh, we'll postpone that till after the lockdown and, and maybe invite all 248 uh, of you along for the party. Um so uh, yeah, but we're, we're, we're very pleased to have won uh, a global title. Uh, I'm gonna bring up that certificate quickly just uh, to show it off. Uh, you, you guys are the first people seeing it. Um, and I, I say you guys, I obviously mean gender neutral. I mean everyone watching, male and female. And uh, that is our, 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 that's the electronic copy of our award. Uh, the irony here is that the award is sponsored by Glen Turret, but Glen Turret is not available in South Africa. So I get a, a bit of a chuckle out of that. Um, and then uh, I'm quite keen to so just briefly to share with you, uh, and all of this is on our website with, with links to, to everyone else, but uh, the rest of the, the icon winners. So it should be on your screen at the moment. We'll just do that. Neil and I can get nice and small in the corner. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's just to kind of scroll through and, you know, uh, lots of great deserving people and entities, businesses. Um, there we are, um, which is pretty cool. Um, a design agency of the year, Stranger and Stranger. If uh, if you don't know who they are, they design all the Compass Box packaging. Uh, uh, you know, whatever your thoughts about Compass Box are, they're probably positive. But the truth is, their packaging is on another level. Stranger and Stranger um, do their their design work. Um, don't know if there's anyone here you want to comment on Neil Jack Rose Dining Saloon. These guys are in Washington D.C. They won Whiskey Bar of the Year. Uh, the Whiskey Bar of the Bar in uh, Morningside was was nominated, so um, we're quite happy to lose out to to Jack Rose. Uh, I think their whiskey selection at the moment is is six thousand strong, um, and they've been going for Only six I, times what we've got. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, closed bottles to, to sell to, for their staff. Um, we, yeah. we we just staff open bottles to consume to get them through the next few weeks. Yeah. It's not too bad. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Georgie Bell, which is really cool because Georgie was in South Africa uh, late last year. She did the Kragalaki 51 uh, event at the bar. So really cool and congratulations to her. Obviously, we have the world famous uh, Andy Watts, who will be joining us at about half past three. Um, Andy, has, this is not Andy's first Icon Award. Um, I believe he is watching now, so we'll chat to him shortly, but uh, we'll chat to him about the award. But absolutely brilliant to see um, you know, him win uh, another award. 
Uh, great to see uh, it's Big Five for duty free. So here, apparel retail of the year, Big Five duty free. That's South African. So that's great. Um, again, South Africa won four Icon Awards. Uh, and then the fourth being for sustainable distillery, which is also James Sedgwick. James Sedgwick being the, the home of Three Ships and Baines. Here we go. Uh, we'll chat to Andy about that as well. But uh, yeah, some very deserved winners uh, and great to, to have us included in those, to be honest. And great to have practically three or four of them, um, well, three of them, uh, represented on this little you know whiskey chat, this happy hour. So yeah. Um, Neil, any final words before I let you go? Um, not really, guys. Uh, stay safe, keep it real. Hopefully, you guys are stocked up, uh, and we'll see you in 15 days uh, for all keepers at the shop. If it's longer, uh, perhaps we'll start a Facebook group where you can order whiskey to be delivered uh, under the radar. Man, we'll need it. It's in the arm of the work for us. Cheers. All right, thanks, little cheers. Okay, um, I want to, so next on the agenda is, I actually just need to find it now. Uh, we currently have 250 people live. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I need to find Rowan in, in, in and amongst them. Okay, Rowan is gonna join us shortly. So uh, if you don't know Rowan, uh, Rowan is the, I've been incorrectly referring to Rowan as the national brand ambassador, uh, which is my fault, my apologies to Rowan. Um, very kind. Hey. hey, Rowan, how are you doing? All right, thanks to you, Mark. Good, thanks. Nice headphones. <laughs> yeah, I know. I knew you were going to say that. Please excuse this. Uh, I don't know. All my friends who are watching are going to give me bullets, but at least I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we, we, we tested. I tested with Rowan earlier, and the sound wasn't working until he used the headphones. Uh, he preferred not to use them, but we don't have an option here. <laughs> um, they, they bring out the blue in your eyes, so it's it's good. Oh, you, thanks. Good. Thanks for the compliment, man. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Rowan, you want to just tell quickly uh, or tell the people quickly who you are? Yeah, so my name's Rowan Gibb. I work for RGBC, the really great brand company. Uh, they are local distributors and purveyors of fine spirits and champagne within SA. And I look after the three single malt whiskies uh, in their portfolio, uh, namely. The Ben Riech, which we'll be chatting a bit more about later. Uh, the Glen Jonach, which is from East Highlands, rich sherried single malt whiskey. And then lastly, the third uh, whiskey that I look after is Glen Glasser, which is quite a unknown uh, brand, especially in, in SA, uh, but very, very unique, situated you know, on the coast of Scotland. So really is a whiskey shaped by the land and the sea. Um, so yeah, I, I look after those three brands from a South African point of view, uh, trying to grow them, uh, making sure they're available, priced correctly in certain outlets. Um, and then a big part of my role is, is advocacy. So doing a lot of events or consumer experiences where people get to taste the brand, uh, get inspired, get educated, and hopefully go out and, and buy some product afterwards. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, are you just in general, are you keeping well and you, you're you know quarantined and you're healthy and fine? Um, yeah, I'm well, I'm healthy, and same as, as you and, and Neil, more than enough whiskey to, to last me through this time, Excellent. which is nice. great. Uh, yeah. I see some nice bottles behind you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, just briefly, is there any news from, from Scotland? So kind of what, what, what's, you know, what is, what's the state of the, of, the, of the distilleries in your portfolio at the moment? Yeah, so news from, from our side, all three distilleries are, are currently closed down, so no production, uh, obviously closed to visitors as well. And um, the, the bottling plant in Newbridge also closed down. So unfortunate time, but we have to abide by the rules. Uh, but on a positive note, you know, it's nice to know there's still thousands of casks uh, patiently aging in our warehouses, which is, which is good. Absolutely. All right. Um, so, I'm, and the main reason for inviting you on board, uh, we're inviting you to join us today, um, is that for anyone who doesn't know, uh, we recently did two Whiskey Brothers single casks. So I'm going to just do this. Mm. All right, so uh, you helped us make these reality. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, the, we're we're, we're going to talk through these and have a quick online tasting. And when I say quick, I really mean like four or five minutes of tasting here. But yeah. uh, these are single casks. They are not available anywhere else in the world. They were selected by us. They were bottled for us. Uh, again, if you look closely on the label, uh, you can see uh, 
uh, they were bottled for Whiskey Brother. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, so kind of the story is we did not choose these in Scotland. I mean, we like to do that, but it doesn't always coincide with the trip. So Rowan organized us some samples um, when we got the green light that we could do this. Uh, we haven't done Benriach before. For those who know, you know some of our history, I think we've done 22 different single casks um, ranging from you know, just a, a whole array of Scottish distilleries as well as three ships, as well as the Woodford. But uh, yeah, these are our first Benriachs. We weren't planning on doing two, so we were very much planning on doing one. Rowan got us some samples, uh, we tried a few, and actually we couldn't just take one because there was a second sample that was just unbelievably good. Um, the pricing was right as well, and we just thought, okay, screw it, let's let's just do them both. Uh, we didn't realize they would they would arrive like practically a week before you know national lockdowns, so, but yeah. uh, we I mean we did really well. We, we uh, these were quite popular online. They were our top two sellers for last month, um, and uh, the rum is almost gone. I mean, so the rum was quite a quite a small outturn. It is a barrel, so it was you know only two hundred fifty liters. Um, mm. Actually, sorry, it's a barrel, so it's 200 liters, and uh, it yielded 140 bottles. And out of those 140 bottles, I think we've got about 10 left. Uh, the other cask is a sherry cask, so you know you're looking at a 500 liter uh, punchin, and uh, that, that yielded, I think, we're gonna look at the, I'm gonna cheat to look at the bottle. 636. Mm. There you go, 636. So that's a lot of bottles, uh, and um, you know we've sold a lot, but there's still a lot left to go. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Rowan, do you, do you have the board in front of you? I can see the tubes over your, I think it's your left shoulder. I do. They poured okay. and they're ready to go. I think we should start right. with the rum. What, what do you think? Yeah, let's start with the rum. So if anybody has these, uh, please, you know, please pour, pour a dram and, uh, and share in the moment with us. Um, I mean, that's the one thing about digital tasting is that we can't always have the same thing in our glass. But uh, I know that there's at least 100 people out there with, the, with these. So hopefully you're watching now. So, uh, yeah. Solange, cheers, guys. Cheers, Rowan. Thanks for joining us. Solange, thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, what, uh, anything you, you want to tell us about the rum cask? Uh, well, yeah, firstly, uh, on, the, on the nose, for me, I, I guess everyone's palate is different, but I really do pick up that those tropical fruits, especially uh, like bright pineapple. Uh, it's quite, quite outstanding, in my opinion. So just so everyone knows, so these are, so they have been React single casks. They are both 12 years of age. They are both cask strength. Um, the difference is, is that the one was matured in a rum cask, it was a rum barrel, and the other one was matured in a sherry cask, more specifically a Pedro Jimenez puncheon. Uh, if you're not familiar with the puncheon, the puncheon is the same volume as a, as a sherry butt, so it's a 500 liter. It's generally made out of European oak. The difference is it is usually shorter than a uh, butt, but wider, more squat. Um, so uh, it's just used for sherry maturation. Uh, it's not that often you, you know, there aren't that many of them, but uh, you know, if it's a butt or punchin, they're quite interchangeable. There's no real difference. What makes a bigger difference is the sherry that was in before in how many uses. So both of these are the Peter Benriach. Benriach is in quite an unusual space side distillery in that they do do a fair amount of Peter production. Um, so both of these, same peated spirit, lots of smoke on these, but then the one being rum, one being sherry, and therefore quite distinctive. So there's a, you know, it's a beautiful kind of intersection between, a, you know, similar, because it's the same producers, same spirit, same peat, but then, you know, quite unique in that one's rum, one's sherry. As and quite say, nice to, to have on your shelf, uh, hey Mark, uh, you know, same distillery, uh, same vintage, uh, yet two different styles of, of cask bottling. I don't know if you've had that in the past, but someone who's trying to enter into single cask, who's trying to, who's trying to explore it, I think this is a great way to go about that, by buying both units and seeing how completely different they are, uh, purely due to the fact of the cask that, they, that they're aged in. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I, and, I, yeah, and that's exactly it. I mean, we're quite happy that we could take them both because to have them side by side, I appreciate, you know, some, pe some, some people might have a preference and only pick up one, but for the guys who, you know, have the means and have the interest, you, you know, get the pair, and uh, and to do a side by side comparison is very insightful. You know, better understand what rum brings to the table in terms of you know flavor impact, and what mm -hmm. uh, what you know PX Sherry does. So uh, yeah, the rum for me, I mean, it's got that smokiness, but it, as you say, it's a little bit more tropical fruity. The pineapples, mm -hmm. you know, just unmissable. Um, I find a bit of a citrus note as well, almost a bit of a lime, um, but more overall more crisp. Also, you know, a bit of an apple cider note. 
Yeah, and what I love, uh, Ben Riech is, is famous for having a, a fruit forward spirit, so a very, very fruity spirit. And although these are, are quite heavily peated, you still get that uh, that beautiful fruit forward tone uh, in both of them. So I really like that. Oh, man. Um, I hope uh, I hope drinking these with us online. If not, um, make, a, make a plan to get it. Uh, when things settle down, come to the bar and, and get a dram. Um, I see Hardy saying he's getting the rum cost right now. Um, oh, getting rum cost right now is tough. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so, the, also, you know, so rum is an unusual cost to use. They are, they are used in the whiskey industry, but they're not as prolific. The sherry is definitely not as prolific as bourbon. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, you know, so the, the sherry, but richer, it still has a sweetness, but it's not that kind of tropical fruity sweetness. Uh, yeah. You know, more rich, richness coming from the cherry, uh, more of the kind of the, the raisins and the dry fruit, which is just, you know, you'd expect and easy to find. And dark chocolate, say, yeah. Absolutely, a bit of chocolate to that. Um, we have a poll at the bottom. So if you're looking at this on your laptop or your desktop, um, there's a poll section. We've got two polls. That second poll now, which is live, which is, uh, you know, just to take the vote for Ben Ria, uh, well, for these single casks, and which one you think would be better. Um, so far, I need both in my life is uh, is, is is winning, uh, which I I'd, I'd, I'd agree with. Uh, if you can get both, which is your favorite, Mark? <sighs> it's tough. Um, there's there's been a kind of there's been a you know whenever this happens within the team, we talk about which one we prefer. Whiskey is subjective. There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, mm -hmm. I love them both. I'm proud to have the Whiskey Brothers name on both, but I am going to go for the Sherry. Uh, I'm going to go for the Sherry. Nice. What about you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, last week I was blown away by the rum, but, you know, today, I don't know if it's the weather or if it's what I had for lunch, but the sherry is, is definitely my favorite right now. So it's almost like a love-hate relationship. Who knows? <laughs> That's yeah. why, as you said, better to have both. Yeah. So the, the sherry will be my favorite today, but the rum was my favorite yesterday. I mean, these are, they're both excellent. You know, if you are, you know, if you the scoring type and you want to score them, Maybe you know one of them is just slightly you know two or three points better than the other, um, but they're both they're both superb whiskies. Um, you know the, the they're high alcohol, they're cask strength, but they don't come across as that. Uh, definitely very drinkable, even though we're looking at um, fifty six point four for the PX and fifty nine point two for the rum. Uh, but they mm. by no means kind of you know heavy on the alcohol. Um, yeah, well, right, um, and a, Rowan, and Rowan, and a common. You want a to common say? question, a common question asked about Ben Riech is, you know, why, why do they do peated, uh, non-peated, and that's that's just their the, the DNA. They've always been an extremely experimental distillery. Uh, they do three styles actually. Uh, they do unpeated, peated, as well as triple distilled. And uh, in certain months of the year, during the Scottish spring, which is now, actually they do their own on-site floor malting. So a very very experimental distillery. Um, so that's why a lot of people ask, you know, why, why peat, why classic, why triple distilled? That's just that's just what they do, and that's why they have such a, a big following globally. Absolutely. I mean, they've been they've been, and I feel like we should have, you know, we should have a like a full segment about, you know, Ben Riach in particular. Uh, there's obviously lots of history, and there's a South African connection there. But uh, the one thing is, I mean, they've been very kind of uh, experimental, different types of casks, uh, doing as you say, peated, unpeated, doing triple distilled. Uh, you know, they, so just cool stuff, uh, lots of variety. Not all of it works. Most of it does, in my opinion, actually, but um, quite a versatile mm. distillery. And if you're a whiskey drinker, always something interesting, uh, you know, to try and something new. And something new, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, Rowan, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, appreciate it. Hey, time. Mark, thanks very much for having me, man. Um, and uh, yeah, stay keep safe. safe and and we'll, we'll get you back. All right, uh, hang around. Uh, I see some right. guys asking some questions about maybe Ben Riek or the cask, so. If you want to jump in and, and uh, answer them, then please go ahead. All right. Thanks very much, Mark. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, man. Ciao. Okay. So um, we currently have 255 people watching. Uh, again, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I see uh, Andrew B. I'm just going to shout out a few people. I see uh, Vernon. Uh, I see Lee Engel, uh, Steve Krauss, Dean. Um, so thank you so much, guys. It's awesome just to see so many names we know. Duran, Dunks is even in the mix. Uh, it's very cool. So thank you, everyone, for just you know for coming through and drinking some whiskey with us.
Um, our special guest for this afternoon is uh, none other than uh, the whiskey icon and legend Andy Watts. Uh, I'm going to just call Andy up on stage, um, if that is the correct terminolo terminology. Where is Andy? So we need a second. Okay, we're inviting Andy uh, online. We had some trouble with Andy connecting yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think we've overcome our, our technical issues. Uh, I think he he MacGyvered a, a solution uh, on his cell phone, so he should be joining us. Uh, yes. There we go. Andy Watts, how are you? I'm good, Mark. It's working. <laughs> good. Nice to see you again. Uh, I think you're probably tired of seeing me, uh, but it's very nice to see you. Again. How how no, are you keeping? You. No, great. Thanks, Mark. It's. Uh... I hear you saying it's nice and cool in Joburg. It's like 37 here in Wellington. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I, I'd invite you over, but unfortunately, you, you can't leave your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are, you, uh, are, you, uh, are you in the family keeping well? Are you guys safe and sound? Yeah, yeah, Mark. I mean, it's. Uh, I think it's difficult times for everybody. Um, you know, I'm fortunate. I've, I, I stay on the distillery, so I... My playground's a little bit bigger than most people's backyards, uh, so it allows us to, you know, to get out and, and at least do a little bit of exercise. Right. Um, what what what's the status of the distillery at the moment? Um, you know, are you are you producing? Um, yeah, I heard you mention it earlier, Mark. Unfortunately, uh, we're legally not allowed to produce potable alcohol. Uh, there's a shutdown on the industry in total. Um, wow. So the distillery at the moment is producing a little bit of uh, of alcohol for sanitizer purposes, uh, okay. which the company has agreed with. Okay, um, and, and so I mean, how does does that impact? Is there any consideration there for for, for the future in terms of you know if these few months? You know, I know it hasn't been that long yet, but um, in terms of kind of just forecasting for the future, uh, any considerations there? Uh, Mark, I mean it's. You know, we always carry strategic stock. It's, uh, you know, generally for purposes like a boiler breaking or something happening with the still, which, you know, probably can take up to six months to replace. Um, you know, we didn't lay down strategic stock expecting coronavirus. Uh, the same as we didn't lay down strategic stock expecting the water crisis two years ago. You know, so, uh, you know, we do have stock in maturation. So a few months of non-production is, is not going to impact the, the ball game in. In a few years' time, as soon as we get the go-ahead, then we can start producing again, and we'll we'll soon make up that stock. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and so you, you mentioned so the, the you're not allowed to produce alcohol now, but you you can produce I guess it's ethanol for the sake of uh, you know for hand sanitizer. Well, it's it's actually I mean it's uh, it's new make from Baines. Um, okay. You know, which then just has to go away. Uh, it leaves our premises, goes to one of our other premises where. The blending takes place, which is actually the denaturing uh, of that product to to take it from being potable spirit to to non-potable. Uh, okay. In other words, not fit for human consumption. Okay. So I mean, so there's no change there to the the way that the Baines New Make would generally be produced. No, it's 94.8% uh, spirit is is the legal definition at the top end. We generally okay. go to 94.3. Uh, for sanitizers, it's you know anything above seventy percent is is fantastic, and it's normally okay. you know put into the bottles at just over sixty. Okay, and and so I mean, I, so I appreciate. So you stay on site, but the rest of the 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 distillery workers are they coming in from off site, or is there other accommodation there? The the only people who are allowed to be on site at the moment are those who are involved in the essential work, which is producing the sanitizer. So, for example, Johan and the maturation team. <coughs> Dolphy and the blending team, uh, the office staff, they, they're not at work, not the distillery, or you know, for all intents and purposes, is closed for everybody except the essential staff. Okay. Okay, right. Okay. Well, I mean, but that's, that's brilliant that the distillery are doing their part and that the, the distillery can can contribute towards, you know, just the, the, the kind of you know, the severity of the issue we're facing now. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think on behalf of the whiskey community in South Africa and abroad, just to you know, kudos and you know, well done, and send our regards to the guys and hope they stay safe. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I'll do that. No problem. <clears throat> so, uh, Andy, if uh, as a, I'd like to congratulate you on your Icons of Whiskey win. Oh, I'd like to congratulate you too, Mark. <laughs> Have you got a drink there? Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. That's awesome. 
<clears throat> so no, you're no, yeah, yeah. with you, Andy. Uh, this is uh, you know as for whiskey brother. This is our our first award. I think we just got lucky. Uh, judges drank too much, but this is not your first award. I mean, how many? This is what's your tally now? Oh, Mark, it's I, I, you know maybe this is it, you know it's your first award. And to be honest, if we look back, I mean, me and yourself have you know we've known each other from before you even started whiskey brother. Uh, so, I mean, your award to me is, is exceptionally special. Uh, seeing the journey you've had, it's not always been easy. Uh, and, you know, I think that's what makes your award so special is that you've you've had a passion, you've stood by it. And uh, I don't think the judges have had too much to drink. I think it's, it's a well-deserved award which, you, which you've uh, got there. Thank and, you, Andy. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's the first of many to come, looking at what you do with the rest yeah. of your business as well. So... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's fantastic news for for our local whiskey industry, but more importantly, fantastic news for you. In terms of myself, um, you know, the whisk, the awards do mean a lot. It's uh, it's humbling to know that your peers in the industry, um, you know, kind of think that uh, you're worthy of these awards. Um, Absolutely. This particular one was was actually a you know a little bit of a surprise for me because I mean my core business is is not ambassadorial work. Uh, it's right. something I love, uh, and I mean, I've traveled extensively the last three or four years uh, promoting our South African whiskey, um, but I mean, my core business is still actually, you know, making and blending whiskey, so yes. it was a little bit of a surprise, but again, like like yourself, you know, I think it just shows that, you know, people are interested in what we're doing, um, you know, we, we kind of think we, we, you know, not really out there, but uh, you know, there is a lot of people who know a lot about what South Africa is trying to do, and uh, and yeah, the awards just kind of you know take us to the next level and, and and help more people know about what we're trying to do here in South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. I think I mean um, you know the fact that we've won four quite distinctive awards as as a country, right? Uh, I mean, as you say, it's a world well it's a world whiskey brand ambassador. Uh, sustainable distillery, uh, uh, re uh, duty free, and then you know single outlet retailer. That's quite a diverse offering, which I think is is brilliant. You know, I mean, you know, we we've 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 been. People are quick to say, oh well, you know, South Africa is one of the biggest consumers of Scotch whiskey in the world, and and that is true. But it's it's often a volume game and not a value game. Um, you know, in terms of South African economy, we've been struggling for years, and yet a lot of us, well, not a lot of us, but a few of us have managed to kind of just. You know, eke out the little groove we have based on passion, based on trying to do the best we can, like yourself, like the distillery, um, you know, like Whiskey Brother. And so it's great to have that recognition. I mean, you know, uh, four four global titles out of I think it's a total of approximately twenty one. I mean, that's 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 seriously proudly South African. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. it's uh, and you know I think Mark, you'll you know I hope it does. I hope it helps you with your business. Uh, I'm sure it will. Uh, it definitely all the awards which we won over the years have definitely helped us with uh, you know with our products as well, whether it's been Danes or three ships. Um, you know it does heighten awareness. Uh, I don't think there'll be too many people in the whiskey world who aren't aware of your business after after this award, and that's that's great news. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so, I mean, any at the moment, do you do you know the status of the of the distillers in Scotland? Obviously, Distel uh, have the three producers in Scotland. Do you know what their status is? Yeah, this well, all of our uh, visitor centres are down. Um, I haven't got the final status on on the distilleries, but I am assuming that uh, they could also possibly go into a, a shutdown situation. Um, okay. There's this uh, thing called furlough now in uh, in the UK. Um, right. You know, one of those words which you'd never heard of before yesterday or the day before. Um, and you know, it seems that more and more people are, are being moved to that option in, in the UK. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it's probably just a matter of time before we also you know have to stop our business for the duration of this uh, of this crisis. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a you know I think what if we if we just ignore the the you know other industries and the global impact and not to downplay them but just because for the sake of not being overwhelmed and we just look at the the impact of the coronavirus on the whiskey industry I mean there's still such an unknown here you know in terms of um, you know what's to come the impact on global supply uh, on global demand um, there's no doubt that people are gonna 
you know, I mean, the, the economy has taken a beating and will continue to do so. Um, so disposable income is going to is going to you know be reduced. So I mean, it, it's you know, as as in as individuals in the industry that you know, this is our livelihood. It's it's a grave concern, both locally and internationally. What what's going to happen? Um, I mean, do, do you do you feel that uh, you know that there's? I'm assuming you you share the concerns about the, the brands. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I look at Distel, I mean, Distel has uh, been absolutely amazing for its employees in this, uh, you know, the three, four weeks that this has been coming along. Uh, and, you know, the health and safety of, of Distel's employees is paramount. So, you know, we are not going to have people leaving their homes to, to come to work to produce whiskey uh, if it is actually, you know, a possibility that that could be detrimental to their health and their family's health and everybody else's mm -hmm. health. So, you know, we'll batten down the hatches. We'll we'll do what we're told to do. We trust our leaders at the at the business. Uh, they're keeping us updated on a daily basis of, of what's happening. Uh, so you know, we we just gotta as, you know, we we do have to trust these people and hope that uh, well, not hope, but they that they take the right decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I want to. Uh, Andy, are you happy to take maybe a few questions from the audience? Yeah, of course. Mark. Yeah. All right. So, if uh, anybody watching, and there's still lots of you, thank you. I'm surprised uh, we've made it this far. Uh, I'm. This is all because of Andy. Uh, he's the draw card here. Um, but if you have any questions for Andy, drop a drop a uh, either a question or a, a comment, and uh, um, I will will share this with Andy. So, Andy, somebody somebody asks, uh, give us a teaser as to what to expect in this year's Masters collection. Um. Mark, I, you unfortunately couldn't make the function up in Joburg where we kind of, you know, got together with, with our loyal supporters. Um, I can't remember what the reason now was, whether you were traveling or, or whatever. But we did a similar event down in, in Cape Town and uh, we held it here at the distillery. And what we did was we put several whiskies up, uh, similar to what we did with you with Whiskey Brother last year. Uh, we put several whiskies up for the, for the tasting that evening. Uh, we had to do a little bit of formality before the, the fun started. And, you know, one of the things which Meryl, uh, Meryl uh, who is our, our marketing manager for Three Ships, um, you know, we thought, okay, let's give the kind of audience, our supporters, the opportunity to, to kind of choose what the next Masters collection is going to be. And, uh, and that's what we did. So any of those guys who were here that evening, uh, they had three whiskies, I think, in front of them. Uh, they all chose, or not all of them, but the majority chose one particular whiskey. And that will be this year's Masters Collection. Uh, a different way to what we've done it in the past, but, uh, you know, quite an exciting way and also a way of, uh, of involving the consumer and our friends uh, in that final decision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do, oh, I've, I've uh, focused screen, sorry, I'm... Um, and if somebody wants to know what you're drinking in your glass. Um, well, today I think it's a, a little bit heavy for the weather, but it actually climbed out of the out of the cast to me. It said, "Drink me," and that's the three ships mm -hmm. uh, eight year old Oloroso cask finish. Uh, Excellent masters collection two years ago. That's uh, that, that's hard to find these days. All gone. Yeah, a thousand four hundred and forty bottles. I think it was. So yeah, it's. It's the one thing about the Masters collection now, and especially the, uh, you know, the, the opening day when we have the uh, off the wall sale, uh, it generates an amazing amount of interest. And, uh, you know, we pretty much now, we know that once Masters collection comes out, it's, it is pretty much sold out now, which is, is fantastic news for us. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I mean, and again, I think a lot of people, you know, in the, if you look back over the last four or five years, you know, there's there's been this, you know, kind of give us more, give us more, give us more. Um, and, you know, you know, Distel is a big boat. Uh, these things take time and planning. Um, and now, you know, it seems to be the machine is in is in kind of, you know, is, is working. Um, and the yeah, master's collection uh, is coming really fast. Yeah, Mark, I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of innovation over the years. Um, you know, some of it, I still think, can see the light of day. Some of it's gone back into the into the fast moving big blends. Um, I think this year would have been a pretty special year 
uh, but we probably now, you know, we're probably going to have to shelve maybe one or two of those projects just due to the timelines. Um, you know, master's collection is generally around about the end of September around Heritage Day. Um, right. You know, and also now, you know, with this kind of the amount of time it takes for for us to get into the into the project line at Distel, uh, whiskey being a small part of the company's total business. Um, you know, once we get into that line, then uh, you know we're grateful. Uh, but I think we may have to, to to kind of push one or two projects back to to accommodate some of the larger larger projects within the company. Right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, another question here. Uh, Derek says, uh, any inside info on what you were savoring in your recent post on Twitter? So I appreciate. Uh, for those who might not know, Annie posted a photo. You had some samples, I believe. Um, and someone's asking if you can give any insight into what that's about. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, if th those of you are on Twitter, it's, uh, you know, Friday night, which is tonight, is, is the Friday night uh, dram. And Saturday is the Saturday night sip. And then Sunday nights is, uh, is what we call the Sunday night sup. And those are the three hashtags, uh, which are done by three various uh, you know, whiskey guys around the around the world, they've kind of laid claim to, to those hashtags. So yeah, last week, um, I just thought I'd take a, a journey through our, our Scottish um, uh, distilleries. And, and one of the, you know, the nice parts about my work is, is that, uh, you know, I don't have to get involved too much in Scotland because we've got an amazing team there led by Stephen Woodcock. Um, uh, but I do get to, to get the samples of the products which they are bottling or which I've kept over the years, which have been bottled. So yeah, I was fortunate to last weekend to try a 46 year old Bunner and a 40 year old uh, uh, Topa Mori. Uh, oh, that'll uh, keep you good company. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a, you know, I've got a nice, they're all small bottles, but uh, I've, got, I've got a nice collection of those. And it's, it's sometimes nice to, to kind of treat yourself and that's basically what I did last weekend. Uh, and then every now and then, I'll, every now and then, as as you mentioned earlier, whiskey is very subjective. Um, I'll go back and visit some of my projects, which are uh, work in progress at different times of the day mm -hmm. or different times of the week after different meals, just to see you know how they they taste okay. after that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's all in the name of research. Mark. Do you, I mean, do you, um, yeah, all the name of research, tough, tough gig, but uh, I mean, so you, you've got a lot going on there, but I mean, you, you know, you, this is, this is, you the man that makes it happen. I mean, do you off the top of your head just know what is where and what's coming along and what's ready and what's not and what's in your special warehouse, et cetera? Or, I mean, is there just so much that you actually need to refer to some kind of, you know, Excel spreadsheet, so to speak? Yeah, I actually do keep a spreadsheet, uh, more because I'm getting older and the memory is not as good as what it used to be. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, Mark, I'm into my 36th year in the industry now. Um, wow. And you do tend to, you know, I've, I've never made whiskey complicated, uh, if that makes sense. To me, either I appeals to me or it doesn't appeal as much to me. Um, you know, I'm not one for complex tasting notes. Uh, it really is about the basic, uh, you know, what really ticks my boxes. And I kind of know now with, you know, the new make from the still, what that's going to be like if it's matured in certain casks uh, and what I think that whiskey will then do if it's transferred into other styles of cask for a finish. Um, so, you know, that part isn't too difficult uh, anymore. Uh, I had a free hand for many years, so I've got a lot of of those kind of experiments, which are around in the stores, especially store 13. Um, and yet it's nice now that more of these projects are coming online and we're starting to see more of them coming to the light of day. Uh, but yeah, it's probably, you know, my, my innovation mind kind of slow down a little bit now and go more in a direction more than the maverick I've been over the years. Right. Okay, interesting. Uh, Andy, two more questions, if you don't mind. Uh, one of them is, uh, when is the next batch of Pinotage 15-year-old coming out? Uh, I guess the disclaimer there is assuming there is a next batch planned. 
Um, the whole thing about the master's collection is that it is mm -hmm. one-off, uh, something unique, something different. Uh, so yes, the 15-year-old Pinotage, that won't be repeated. It's not to say there won't be other Pinotage cast finishes at different ages, younger, older. Uh, but the 15-year-old, that's mm -hmm. what the master's collection is all about. It's about that, uh, that <clears throat> uniqueness of that particular bottling. Okay. Uh, and then I have a question from uh, Gary, and that's actually the Whiskey Brother Gary. Uh, Gary wants to know, um, with regards to barley, and I, it's slightly more of a, I guess, a, pro a production question, um, and uh, it's, you know, maybe just a quick highlight answer if you can, but yield versus quality. You know, is there a natural trade-off? So we're talking about, you know, using different varieties of barley. Uh, generally, the industry are using barley varieties that are geared towards yield, so giving them the most alcohol. Uh, so it's about efficiency. Uh, Gary wants to know, you know, how does that play off against quality? Um, and, you know, as, as a whiskey producer, as you say, for 36 years, uh, we'd love to know your thoughts. Well, when we started making malt whiskey way back, or when I started being involved in the business for the first time and making malt whiskey back in 1984, uh, we were using, you know, dead normal uh, beer brewing barley, uh, which was grown out in Caledon. Um, and you know that it is there. The payoff is that with, uh, or the the playoff there is with brewing barley's. Uh, the yields are just so so much lower. It becomes very expensive. Um, what we've done for the last you know 25 25 years plus is we've dealt with a commercial monster in the UK. Uh, we deal with the Scotch Whiskey Association approved uh, varietals, which are out there. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk on, on Twitter uh, and in so whiskey circles about terroir and the influence of that. Uh, I think that's a program on its own. I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, but no, we, we tend to stick with the tried and tested varietals, which give you, um, you know, the maximum yield. Uh, if you can convert, that's the other, mm -hmm. you know, it's like anything. You're given that barley and you're given a predicted spirit yield. Uh, your mash, your milling, your mashing, your fermentation uh, will all play a part of do you get that yield or not. So, you know, just receiving a bag of barley, which is supposed to give you 450 liters of alcohol per ton, uh, depending on your process, doesn't mean you're going to get that. Uh, right. So, you know, the barley is just the start of the business. If you if you can't convert it properly, uh, then you could just as well buy brewing malt. Okay. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, lastly, then, just a few comments I'm just going to read out. So we've got Guy saying, um, we'd love to see a Baines WB exclusive. Uh, I agree. That's uh, Chris. Uh, thanks, Chris. Sorry, I missed uh, that, Mark. Uh, a Whiskey Brother exclusive Baines release. Okay, okay. So uh, just putting it out there, the people. this is what the people want. We should give them what they want, Andy, I'm just saying. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm, I'm there. I can do that for you, Bob. Um, we were, uh, we got a question from Clifford saying, when is the next Three Ships Whiskey Brother exclusive? Um, let's just put a hashtag, watch the space. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, um, now, you, now you've asked me on air, and I can't really say I'm not going to do one, can I? It, it, oh, brilliant. Okay, so that will be the response to the marketing <laughs> people when we have pushback. We'll just say, but we, we, we promised the people on air during a lockdown that uh, we were going to do it. Um, Andy, uh, is there anything else that you'd just like to say to the folks out there while as we wrap up? Well, I mean, Mark, I mean, we spent quite a bit of time yesterday trying to get this uh, whole crowd cast to work uh, on the Stell firewall equipment. Uh, and in the end, we finished up getting it onto the onto the cell phone, the mobile. And, you know, I mean, I share, we were stood there yesterday wondering how many people are we going to get, you know, how many people is going to get interested in this. And then we kind of watched it last night, totting up, totting up how many people were interested, in, you know, to, to see so many people who, okay, we are all at home now. Uh, some of us working from home, but I'm sure we could, you know, give off an hour to, to listen to a program like this. Uh, but I think it's, it's like I say many times, uh, you know, what gets me out of the bed in the morning, it's, it's definitely not the salary. Uh, the mountains and Wellington has a lot to do with that. But it's also these, you know, 250, 300 people uh, who are listening to, you know, two normal guys, or I think of ourselves as being two normal guys, 
Absolutely. Um, you know, chatting about what we love. Uh, it's supposed to be my passion. Uh, I suppose it's supposed to be your passion. It's your business too. Uh, but what fuels my tank is the passion of all these people who, who actually mm. spend time listening to us, uh, commenting, uh, and taking the time to interact with us. That's that's what really fires up my tank. And uh, you know, while ever that keeps going, then you know, I just want to say thank you to all these people. It's absolutely amazing. And and yeah, they must all stay safe. Their families stay safe. And and take care in these uh, in these unprecedented times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Andy. And and I hope we've given you a bit of you know a bit of whiskey cheer to fill your tank for the coming uh, for the coming week or two. Uh, if you saw running yeah, low, we'll. I haven't been able to see all the comments, so maybe you can like if you have got a script of this, just send them to me. And uh, I, I can gladly. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give you yeah, I'll give I you spend a, one of my days going through and, and maybe. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I think. You're, I mean, Andy, you're, you know, you're, you're, a, you're an international whiskey icon, and I, I mean, you are without a doubt one of the most humble people I know in whiskey and otherwise. But uh, I mean, you know, I, I know I speak on behalf of all whiskey lovers, and particularly the South African whiskey lovers, that uh, you know we appreciate you, we love what you do. Um, you know, you have helped and put South Africa on the map with regards to whiskey. You're part of the community, uh, and you're, a, you're, a, you know, you're an you're an incredibly important part uh, of that community. So thank you. Um, thank you for giving up your time to, to join us for a chat. Uh, um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope the people at, at home have enjoyed it. Um, and I, I have no doubt that most people came online to watch you, <laughs> which I'm completely in fine with. But uh, it's, so thank you. Thanks for kind of, you know, for, for, for participating. And again, congratulations on the award. Uh, stay safe with the family. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks, Mark. Excellent. Uh, thanks, Andy. Uh, I'm going to let you go. Okay, everyone. Hi. Um, so thank you again. Uh, that's awesome to have Andy here. Um, so uh, we, we've got a few more minutes, and I'm, I'm happy to hang around as long as there are people that want to listen to me. Um, I'm quite keen to just tell people what's coming. Um, and then after that, I'm, I'm happy just to answer any questions. If you have, pop them, you know, ask a question. Uh, and I'll go through some of the comments and just you know chat to people. Well, maybe we can bring some other people up on stage. Um, but you know, I'm I'm more than happy to spend my time here. Um, and thank you for your interest. Um, so in terms of new releases, uh, this is and it's a difficult time because we want to say, well, this is what's coming. But at the moment, with the lockdown, we don't know when they're actually well, when they will actually be available, uh, when we'll have stock, and when we can actually you know move that stock and sell that stock to whiskey lovers. But uh, I am quite keen to just kind of you know run through a, a few products that are quite cool and interesting that we would like to share with you. Um, I'm just uh, going to share my screen and bring up some. Okay, so uh, let's make this the focus and not my face. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, so this is a product that we are expecting as soon as the lockdown is done. Uh, the stock has arrived in South Africa. Uh, it's quite a cool and interesting product. So this is done by two South African guys. Um, and the thinking around here is is obviously the plight of the South African rhino and just the African rhino in general. Um, and uh, the, the intention here, so this is a Scotch single malt from an undisclosed space side distillery. And uh, it should be available, you know, a few short weeks after the lockdown is lifted and alcohol sales can resume. Uh, I think estimated retail is about 700 Rand. Uh, the guys from uh, from this project sent me a little sample. So this is all I can show you, the little sample on my, on my window here. Um, and 5% uh, of all the sales will you know, be donated to uh, you know, uh, rhino conservation, uh, which I think is a great cause. Very cool to, to put these two things together. Um, and why not? Um, so that's that's one thing. Uh, that's, that's expected and coming soon. Uh, the next image is just the, the packaging. So quite nice packaging. I think the guys have done a, well, a good job. I'm not sure if they're watching now, but uh, Whiskey Brother will be the, the exclusive resale uh, retailer of this product. Um, so we hope you'll support a good cause when this becomes available. Uh, I, I tried a bit of the sample earlier. It was actually what was in my first glass, and it's just a nice drinking daily dram. Um, the label says it's double matured with a rum finish, which is quite interesting with our Ben Riech here today as well. Um, the rum finish is not evident on the on the nose of the palate for me, but definitely just a little bit of uh, influence there. 
Uh, next off, we have uh, this very interesting uh, bottle, which is actually a private cask of uh, Port Charlotte. So uh, Port Charlotte produced by the Brooklady Distillery on Isla. I'm sure you know that. Um, usually when you bottle a, uh, if you're a private owner of a Port Charlotte cask and you bottle it, you get this type of bottle and this type of label. So this is actually uh, a, a, one of the bottles from this outturn. Uh, if we turn around, we've got a new front label, which is actually an original artwork by William Kentridge. Uh, if you're not a big art fundy, uh, William Kentridge is probably one of the most famous South African uh, artists. Uh, he's exported globally. His original artwork and prints go for a very hefty sum. Uh, and he's actually done uh, the label for this bottle, which is very cool. Uh, it's also got a beautiful story um, about uh, um, British defeat by the Zulu army um, in 1879. So very cool uh, South African artist, a uh, good 14-year-old uh, single malt cask strength Port Charlotte. Uh, we're expecting this, uh, again, just after the lockdown is lifted. Uh, the cask yielded 222 bottles. So, uh, you know, fair size outturn, not large, not, not particularly small. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, we look forward to this kind of arriving as soon as we, uh, we can. Uh, next, we've got Adelphi's. So uh, Adelphi, the independent bottler from Scotland. Um, we love these guys. We started bringing them in last year. Uh, we get a, every quarter we get a, a batch, um, and uh, their latest batch arrived on Thursday afternoon, just before lockdown. So uh, they're all sitting uh, in our in our warehouse. Um, as soon as lockdown lifts, we will be able to get these out. Um, we may list them online, so if you're interested, just keep an eye on the website. Um, we we have very limited quantities. I think the smallest quantity we have is four bottles, and the biggest is is eighteen. Um, we've I've got a few of the bottles here with me, so uh, I hope you can see the label. This is a twenty one year old Jura uh, Oloroso Hogshead. Uh, you know, beautiful color on that. Uh, you want to talk about color? Look at just look at the outrageous color on this. Um, let me make myself uh, a little bit more visible. Uh, this is a Ben Rinnis, uh, Speyside Distillery, 10-year-old, um, and we're talking about a first full Oloroso butt. I mean, that color is just dark as night. It looks like Coke in the bottle. Uh, we also have this very cool Kalila coming through. Right, 13-year-old Kalila, a refill hogshead, 299 bottles, cask strength. I don't think that's um, it's, uh, focused. I can also just show you the photos here if you're interested. Um, so these are coming as soon as the lockdown is lifted. And then the last one I'll show you, this is a Glen uh, which is very exciting. That's obviously Billy Walker's new distillery. We're looking at a refill PX butt, which is, I think, a really good combination. 12-year-old, 59.7% alcohol. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Um, and then uh, lastly, in terms of new releases that we're expecting, um, I want to just close the screen share. Uh, I've got these bottles here, and I think if, if this is well received and we still have 200 people watching, which I can't believe, we will do this again next week. Uh, maybe we'll get Yossi on. But uh, for those of you who know Single and Single, uh, Single and Single have a new batch. Single and Single is a South African independent bottler. Uh, Yossi, I hope you're watching. I chatted to him earlier. Uh, he's got three new single casks arriving uh, as soon as the lockdown is lifted. We have an Imperial. Uh, this is a 24-year-old. Uh, they're all American oak ex-bourbon matured. Um, Imperial is actually a closed distillery, which is Single and Single's first closed distillery, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got this awesome looking Bruno Harvin, 17-year-old. Um, um, and uh, it's also, uh, there's no sherry on this, but a beautiful color. So a nice wood influence. And then lastly, we have Ardmore, which is a peated Highlander. Um, and this is a 10-year-old, 53.9. Uh, these are then three new single and singles coming. So uh, very excited. As soon as we can, actually, as soon as the lockdown is lifted, we will get these out to you. Uh, keep an eye on the website. Uh, as you know, the bar's closed, the shop's closed. Uh, we can't do deliveries at the moment, but uh, the products may make their way online. And if you're interested in the meantime, uh, please go ahead and buy, and then we'll get them out to you as soon as we can. Um, all right, so, I mean, officially, I want to just thank everyone uh, for watching. Uh, I'm not going to go anywhere, so I still see plenty of people watching. Uh, I see some, some comments from people I'd like to address. 
Uh, I might bring up somebody else so that you don't just have to look at me anymore, but uh, thank you guys so much. It's so awesome to see uh, people have an interest in people, you know, getting together to to do what we love and allowing us to do what we love, and we appreciate it. Uh, it makes things at the moment feel a little bit more normal. Uh, I really hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, and, uh, and yeah, if there's questions, I'm going to go through the questions now. Uh, I guess this can just be an open Q&A session. Um, I might invite maybe somebody, one or two others up. Uh, to chat, so it's not just me. Uh, I do see Boutique Dave. So Dave Worthington, I saw you say hi, and I see some people talking to them. Uh, Dave is the global brand ambassador for that Boutique Whiskey Company, which is an awesome independent bottler. Dave was at our show last year, the only whiskey show. Uh, Dave, so nice that you could join us. Thank you. Uh, Dave's actually been doing his own Boutique podcasts or live streams. So uh, check him out. He's adding uh, whiskey to his porridge every morning. Um, Dave, are you available to join us? Uh, drop me, Dave, if you're available, I'll bring you up online and you can say hi to, uh, to the South Africans. Uh, Gary saying, thanks, Mark, and the WB team. Awesome, uh, Gary, thanks for joining us. Dean, uh, Andre, Stian, um, uh, Kyle, thanks for the time. Uh, Amanda, uh, hi, man, it's lovely to see you. Hope you and uh, David are well. Uh, Vernon, I see Barry, I see Kyle. Let's see what questions we got going on here. Um, so one of the questions is, how do I get an invite uh, for these exclusive events? Uh, the, the, the individual there is referring to the three ships exclusive events. Um, I don't actually know. I didn't, I didn't uh, not that I didn't get the invite, but I, I didn't attend. Um, <clears throat> I, I will try and find out, but I think if you're watching their Facebook page, if you're watching Instagram and Twitter, um, you're likely to see an invitation there that, um, that doesn't last too long. So that's probably your best option. <clears throat> um, Gary's asking, how about distiller exclusive for, through, I guess, James Cedric? That's a great question. Um, maybe we'll get Andy to answer that and uh, he, can, he can let us know. Um, and uh, what else? Lots of questions for Andy. I'm sorry if I didn't get your question. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, I've got Rian asking, how about a Whiskey by the Podcast, interviews and whiskey discussions? Uh, Rian, to be honest, I think this will be our channel. Um, so if this works for people and you, you found this somewhat interesting and entertaining, uh, somewhat informative, uh, I think this is actually a nice, a nice channel. We can take the audio and upload it as a podcast, but it's nice to have the video and have people watch it as well. Um, I have a question. There's a question from Christopher Morkel. What's the PC going to retail for? Uh, uh, Chris is referring to this. The, the price on this is will be quite heavy, um, and it's it's because it's not just about the whiskey; it's about the art. Uh, it is an original William Kendrick piece. It is a limited kind of print production run, uh, so there is quite a quite a steep price on this. Uh, you and again, I think most people who buy this who can afford to buy this will be buying it for the investment purpose. You can we can have a separate discussion if you think that's okay or not. But you're looking at just shy of about ten thousand rand. Um, again, if you were buying a, a William Kendrich print, a limited print, you'd be paying several times that. So uh, if you're from the art world, that's really well priced. If you're from the whiskey world, that's obviously, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little heavy for the whiskey. Um, just trying to see. Uh, Amanda, thanks, Mark. Um, Robert, uh, hiya. Um, Okay, um, I'm live every afternoon. So this is Dave Worthington from this is Boutique Dave saying I'm live every afternoon at 2 p.m. on the Boutique Whiskey Instagram channel. Sam Simmons and me shooting shooting the breeze, sipping tea. Uh, so there you hear from Dave. Please go and visit Dave's uh, Dave's channel, uh, or Dave's channel, but the Boutique channel. Uh, Linda saying thanks, Mark. This is amazing. Thanks, Linda. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Linda helped us with the press release. So for our for our our regional win for the icon. So thank you, Linda. Um, Duran, can I drop my order from two cases to one? Uh, with pleasure, Duran. Uh, no problem. I think Duran's referring to this. Uh, Duran's going heavy. Um, Duran, I hope the, the Achilles uh, is is healing okay. Um, I, a question from Mark Foster's: Does your personal preference, does your personal preferred taste profile change much over time? <clears throat> uh, Mark, I don't know if you were chatting to if that question was directed at Andy or not. Um, but in terms of my, you know, my answer to that is absolutely. Um, I find depending on the season, you know, depending on the temperature, um, I prefer certain styles. So 
Often during winter, I'm much more about the kind of the, the full sherry mat matured whiskies, uh, much more warming and full bodied and rich. Whereas in summer, those don't work for me that well. And then usually it's something a bit lighter, either ex bourbon cask or with a bit of peat. Um, I think to be honest, you know, I think I speak for most people. Uh, there are some guys that have, you know, let's say they, they don't like peated whiskey at all. They're never going to drink that no matter what the season is or no matter what's going on. But I think for most guys who've, most people that have uh, you know, been on the whiskey journey for quite a while and like all styles, I think, you know, everyone kind of dips in and out of different styles depending on what they feel like, whether that's seasonal, whether that's just completely mood uh, based. Um, I, my analogy is like food. If I, you know, think in the morning, okay, what do I want for dinner? Um, you know, it's like, well, what do I feel like? And whiskey is the same thing. You know, what, what whiskey do I want to pour? Or what do I feel like? Do I feel like something, you know, ridiculously heavy and sherried? Uh, do I feel like something nice and peated, like this Port Charlotte? Um, do I feel like something peated with a little bit of extra, like these, the new Ben Reefs with the sherry? Um, just different styles, depending on how you feel. Um, if I buy on the whiskey by the site tonight, will it get delivered after lockdown? That's, um, that's Michael. Uh, yes, Michael, absolutely. Um, and Gary's answered you. As soon as we're able to deliver, we can. You can order online. And to be honest, if you do, we'd really appreciate it. It would help us in this time. But um, any orders received now, as soon as lockdown is done, uh, we'll have those out to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you're in Joburg or Pretoria, the day the lockdown ends, you will have them the next day. We'll get on the road and deliver. And uh, if, uh, if you're outside of Joburg, we'll get the our courier on it uh, immediately. Um, pricing on the Delphi range, uh, CC, I can't see the full name. The, the Delphi's are generally really well priced. So uh, we bring them in. So there's no middleman in that kind of supply chain. Um, generally for single cask, cask strength whiskies that are either A, peated, or B, heavily sherried, or C, just beautiful bourbon casks, they, uh, they're they very well priced. So you're looking at anywhere between, they generally start just over a thousand. Uh, most of the 10 year olds are around one, 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 two. They haven't been priced yet, so um, they're still to be confirmed. But uh, you're looking at, you know, for what you're getting, you're paying good pricing. Uh, we're a big, in terms of the Whiskey Brother, we're, we're big Adelphi fans. Uh, what's really cool as well is that Adelphi have, um, they've built the Arden American Distillery. <clears throat> and so we actually, in, the, in our last order, we've just picked up a few more of these. This is uh, the, the new spirit from the Arden, Arden American Distillery. Uh, maybe we can go, go into that as another another episode, but um, new distillery producing some wonderful whiskey. Uh, later this year should be their first single malt release because they, they now have old enough whiskey. Um, but up until now, they've been doing uh, these Spirit AD releases um, each year, and um, it's got some whiskey in there that is of age from the distillery, and then it's got some, you know, not yet three years old Spirit that's still maturing. But... Uh, heavy sherry influenced cask strength they're absolutely stunning and they generally retail for about nine and a rand uh, which is a great price i mean there's a there's a bit of a i think a you know it's a bit of whiskey history uh, to have access to this distillery um while it you know matures and comes of age um we've got keith from durban so that's keith uh Emmerich. keith lovely to see you keith says even deliveries to durban arrive the next day um so thanks for the order keith and thanks for um, supporting us, glad you're getting your orders uh, quickly and easily. Um, that Spirit AD 2019 is brilliant. That's Dean Blumenthal. Dean, thank you. Agreed. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of these Spirit ADs. I very much look forward to the um, to the, the whiskey that they released this year, their, their first single malt. Uh, uh, Mr. Gray? Uh, no, that's not Mr. Gray. That's Rob. Uh, Rob, awesome. Arbor collection there. Thanks. Um, thanks, Rob. Uh, I'll just, uh, there's, there's some nice art bags there. Uh, maybe we'll get you on the show in a future episode. Um, Adrian says, Mark can't help but ogle those compass box myth and legends behind you. They're still planning a tasting of those bad boys. Uh, the answer is yes. So we were planning a myth and legends compass box tasting at the bar. has been postponed. As soon as we can, we will go ahead with that. Um, uh, yeah, they. Uh, I've tried them. Um, I actually Neil opened his bottles, Adrian, and they are absolutely wonderful. Uh, look forward to sharing them at the bar with uh, with with that tasting when that happens. Uh, we still have 150 people watching, so thank you guys. It's it's awesome, uh, and I'm literally happy to stand here. Let me is uh, 
Dave didn't answer. Dave, if you're still around, don't you want to let me know? And I'm referring to Dave Worthington from Boutique. Uh, I'll bring him up. Else, uh, Gary, is Gary, is Gary, are you watching? I'll bring, I'll bring Gary up. Um, Andrew says, count me in for the Commerce Box tastings. Awesome. Dean, uh, that Tobias and the Angel I see as well. That is, uh, yeah, good eyes. That's the Tobias and the Angel. Um, that is just over here. Uh, absolutely wonderful whiskey. Vernon says, Mark, can we do an online whiskey tasting with some of your releases? Uh, absolutely, Vernon, more than happy to. Uh, we just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll arrange it. I'm glad, we'll gladly do it. Um, if you guys have interest in doing it, I can. We will just um, go through a few of the Whiskey Brother exclusives. Maybe we'll line that up for the next two, three weeks. Uh, just uh, so watch the space, man, and happy to do that. Um, Kyle. Kyle says, I was fortunate enough to have Neil delivered directly to me the day before the lockdown. Can't praise your customer centric service enough. Thank you, Carl. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your order. Um, glad you're happy with it. Glad we got your whiskey to you quickly. I have to, um, I think all the team, the Whiskey Brother team, Whiskey Brother family are watching and uh, the guys did just a phenomenal job that, that last week before the lockdown. Um, I mean, we have four cars on the road We and it was the team, right? The bar was quiet. So we had Val, we had Fortune, um, Tracy was helping us pack. We had uh, Neil, Gary, uh, everyone was just in the car. Um, the boot loaded with orders and we were just heading out one off the other and getting the orders out to the guys. Um, so thank you to everyone who ordered. It was, uh, it really, you know, it, it's, it gave us a fighting chance during the lockdown, to be honest, uh, which we really appreciate. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of guys got some great whiskey at great prices and they got it in a, you know, in a kind of great you know, time frame, um, a few hours after you order, you had your bottle. And hopefully you're all enjoying those from the comfort of your home uh, during the lockdown. At least you've got some whiskey in your glass. Uh, Lee Engel, the, uh, WB service is always awesome. Thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you in the bar again as soon as things open. Um, um, uh, what else? Clifford says, Mark, how many bottles do you have left in stock of your Aaron 12-year-old exclusive? I'm on my second bowl, and it's fantastic. Thank you, Clifford. Glad you like the Aaron. Um, I'm not sure of, of stock to be honest. I think we're down to the last several cases. So you're probably looking at, I'm gonna just venture to guess around 20 bottles. Um, sorry about not being more specific. Uh, if you drop me an email, I'll, I'll let you know exactly. Um, we've got Roland saying the service is unbelievable. Phenomenal time frame. Thanks Roland. We've got uh, Corvin saying you guys did well. Thank you. Dave is unavailable. Dave is available, pull him up. Awesome. Uh, that was Rian. Rian, thank you. Okay, Dave Worthington, Boutique Dave, I'm gonna find you and invite you up. Okay, Dave has been invited up. Let's see, uh, it's awesome that he can join us. How cool is that? Thank you for confirming Dave is available. Uh, I see Henry, I see Lee. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Mark Hughes from WTTF uh, Whiskey and Tasting Whiskey Tasting Fellowship says, as you can see from your loyal customers, friends, followers, you and the team have fully earned your award. Thank you, Mark. I, uh, we really do appreciate hey. it. And we have contact with Dave. How are you, Mark? I'm good, Dave. How are you? Congratulations to you and all your team for the uh, icon of whiskey. Thank you very much. I uh, we sincerely appreciate that. South Africa cleared up this time, didn't they, I think? Hey, we're, doing, we're doing okay. We're holding our, our, our own. Ah, well, congratulations. I've got a... Thank you. Yeah, I've What's got a, a drop of whiskey. Sorry? What's in your glass? Um, I have got uh, uh, Strathmel 21 mm -hmm. in my glass this, just now. I've just poured um, some of my breakfast whiskey. Oh, brilliant. So Strathmel 21. I started my tour of Scotland of porridges with this on Sunday, um, putting a splash of whiskey in my porridge each morning. So I've just done the six regions of Scotland. Um, today is Friday, so I'm in Hawaiian shirt and aloha. Yeah, hi, uh, to miss. <laughs> um, well, really because um, Sam and I have been on the Boutique Instagram channel at two o'clock every day you know we do the uncorked whiskey sessions blog uh yeah. podcast i just wanted to try and keep because we're you know, 
we're not doing anything at the moment. We can't get out. We're all on lockdown, house arrest. Um, yeah. So just shooting the breeze and, and being silly, playing silly games. Um, we're only on for 10, 15 minutes every two o'clock uh, on Instagram, on the Boutique channel. But it's and, and I've been doing the breakfast. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do the breakfast next week. Um, I'm going to try and... I was going to try and not have whiskey in my breakfast this weekend. <laughs> uh, is, 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 is it safe to assume you've got lots of uh, you have lots of whiskey, you know, at home on hand? You won't, uh, you won't. There's no risk here, right? Okay, now my, this is my office, so this is just full of boutiques here behind us. Um, the, the cupboard is absolutely full. Oh, brilliant! Um, okay, so you are you, you're fine. You're well stocked here. That's all, all of the stock that we've released and, and samples of it um, and some stuff that we haven't or some stuff that's gone off to special releases out there. But, uh, yeah, we're still we're still um, bottling stuff at, uh, at Atom. We're not completely locked down. All right. Interesting. Um, the, the, you know, factories can if they've, if they've got the social distance and a lot of, lot of companies are still working. Um, right. I'm still working and so I'm being paid every day to to do nonsense but i'm also building tools basically okay um so i'm supporting different regions around the world and and with, i'm actually doing an online tasting tuesday morning over here but it'll be with, with our australian team that they'd had a tasting booked with a whiskey shop and obviously they can't do that now so they've sent the packs out and they're going to try and do something like this right okay. um but they can still move. You, you're not able to move any stock around at the moment, are you, at all? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. The, the bar is, is shut. Uh, the shop is shut. Uh, uh, you know, no deliveries can happen. So, uh, yeah, the, there's a, a complete ban on alcohol sales. Uh, and there is a lockdown in process. So individuals are not meant to leave their homes uh, unless it's for essential services or for you know, groceries or doctors. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's uh, sitting tight and can't, can't do anything but, but drink our stock. Do the, does the supermarkets hold any alcohol at all, or is that completely? Yeah, so uh, it's not like the UK. The the supermarkets can hold. Uh, they can have uh, like a wine license. So they can have some wine uh, retail, but that's not allowed at the moment either. So uh, at the moment, no alcohol is allowed to be sold. Well, that's killing the business, isn't it? I mean, that's yeah. not good at all. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, and so obviously, Whiskey Brother, as well as many others, are, are you know quite profoundly impacted. Um, I mean, you know, this is for the greater good. So hopefully we, we get that outcome. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just sitting tight. And thankfully we have whiskey uh, at home and behind us, as you can see. Um, it's, it's not work, but it is uh, it is cathartic. Yeah. Well, this is yeah. Work. It's reaching out to your customers as well, isn't it? And, and your friends and your customers, um, the people that have been supporting you. So it's a, it, it is a little bit of work, but it's, it, yeah, unfortunately you can't share you can't sell anything at the moment, which is not not good at all. That needs yeah. to change urgently. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is this is a, this is. I mean, a big part of what we do, and I think for you know you, yourself as well, right? Is just that engagement. It's just you know this is what we love. Like Andy said, uh, you know, we're very fortunate that we can do this, um, and uh, and it's about talking to people who share your passion and about you know kind of sharing and learning together and you know etc. And uh, at least we can still do that. Um, you know, it's provide some. You know, some some sanity, so yeah, to speak, yeah. some semblance of normalcy. But yeah, we can't, we can't be pouring for anyone, unfortunately. Uh, it's the one thing about you know just online, right? We can, you know, I'd love everyone to have a, a pour of this in their glass, or you know, your Strathmore, and we can all kind of talk and share. Yeah. But uh, some limitations on that. Yeah. Um, so uh, so uh, where can people find? Well, will you be doing stuff online next week? Um, yeah, every day on the Boutique Instagram channel, there's Sam and I messing about, basically, um, doing the uncorked. Um, we're, we're working our way through it. Neither of us know what we're doing, um, but we've been doing some. So, so that today I was playing the ukulele for Sam. Um, yesterday we did a quiz, which was really good. I mean, that was uh, that was a lot of engagement on the quiz. And um, I think we're going to do more of those silly, silly quizzes that we do on, on, on the the channel anyway on the on, on the podcast and um um i'm not sure about breakfast yet but we're definitely doing the daily two o'clock afternoon tea it's just just a way for everybody just to 
you know, lots of people are working from home and lots of people are not working at all. And it's just a, a time for them to stop and just take stock about what it's all really about. And it's about people, you know, whiskey's about people. And that's what we're trying to get back out there that, you know, we're just having a bit of fun. Just let's not take everything far too seriously. Let's stop, have a cup of tea, very British. Um, we do slip a bit of, um, yeah, we do slip a little drink in every now and again. But uh, <laughs> I mean, take a look. I mean, the, the video should be up on our on our Instagram channel now. If you want to have a quick gander, um, my breakfast yeah. video should be up there as well. I've been posting a breakfast video every morning about. Um, you're not actually sitting there watching me eat porridge. Uh, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I did try and get some porridge in a Glen can, which didn't work. So don't try it at home. Um, uh, it, it just made a mess and took me a long time to get out of the glass. It, it wasn't easy to clean because I can't get my fat fingers in a glen can. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, just a bit of fun. Um, what else are we doing? We will be looking at doing some, I think we're looking at doing ways of doing some tastings with other people. Um, certainly in the UK, uh, I see some online whiskey shows starting to come together. Okay. But we're able to go to the post office and over to go to the shop. I think the post office is still running. Deliveries are still running. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, I mean, yeah, to all those uh, still watching, and we still have a, a substantial number, which is uh, which is awesome. So go find uh, Boutique Dave on all his various channels and tune into um, all the cool Boutique live streams and podcasts and uh, breakfast cereal runs. <laughs> whatever we're doing yeah boutique dave and boutique whiskey are the two channels um and dr whiskey joins me or he, he hosts the afternoon tea so i join him really on the boutique whiskey channel um and we'll be recording another issue of the um of the podcast next week i think we're recording another issue so that there is another issue just dropping another release another batch um, dropping this evening on Spotify, Amazon, uh, and iTunes. But uh, if you've got yeah, nothing else to do. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm sure lots will go see that out. That's great. Um, uh, anything like you can just, what's what we can expect from Boutique in the coming, coming year? Um, well, at the moment, we're trying to obviously sell what we've got bottled now. That's the priority at the moment. We did bottle a lot. Um, new distilleries coming through. Yeah, there's a lot of um, New World whiskey coming through that we, we've got. Um, got some, um, what have I seen? I've seen some, fab I've got some samples back here of some amazing Irish whiskey that 28 uh, year old single malt from Ireland. Okay. Oh, just delicious. I'm hoping it will be bottled very, very shortly. Um, the bottling plant has been pretty busy with a lot of the, the continuous liquids. So the Aerolite Lindsay, um, this um, it's, it's not boutique, but it's Atom, but you know this Green Isle, which is right. currently just it's, a, it's, a, it's just a, a beautifully blended Scotch whiskey. Um, so they're busy doing all of those sort of things with the liquid that we we purchased uh, recently. Um, but yeah, boutique releases. I've got yeah this row down that side you can't see uh, in the corner below the dragon. Um, okay is some of the new stuff that's coming through but I, i've seen I, i've seen that we've had yeah a few new distilleries coming through as well which is kind of cool okay. oh very exciting cool well we hope to get those in south africa uh so everyone can stay tuned and keep uh you know watch the space um hopefully they'll make their way here i hope we can get back out to south africa again soon once all this nonsense uh has blown over yeah absolutely all right well, thanks very much for, for joining us dave it's awesome to see you and you know bring you to you and congratulations to you and the team Thank you. Thank you. We really um, appreciate that. I hope, hope you want to, oh, thank you very much for letting me in. Um, hope you all stay safe out there and uh, keep washing your hands. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, to you and the family, stay safe and keep well. We'll speak to you soon. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. Bye, Dave. Okay. I, uh, I think we'll give this another 10 minutes. Um, we still have an unsurprising, well, not an unsurprising, we still have a surprising number of people uh, who are willing to tolerate my face on their computers. Um, uh, Gary says, thanks, Mark. What an awesome way to start the weekend. Awesome, Gary. Uh, let's give Mark a moment to refill his glass. I had that second um, Ben Riach waiting, so thank you. Uh, very observant of you, and I appreciate the sentiment uh, that was from Vickers. Um, there was a question I actually wanted to answer that said, uh, I'm just going to check some questions. Will there be a Whiskey Brothers show in Joburg this year? 
So that's a very good, it's a very good question. And unfortunately, at this point in time, I can't answer the question. So um, depending on what happens with the lockdown and how quickly things can return to some normality, we um, we would like to have the show. So at the moment, we still hope to have the show. We're still planning to have the show. Uh, we've all, you know, most organization has kind of already happened. But we will, we will make a call at the end of this month. So by 1 May, we will have to make a decision uh, as to whether we can proceed or not. Uh, at this point in time, it's still a yes, but it, there is obviously a, a question mark above that. So <clears throat> if we do have it, it will be in, in Joburg and it will be in Cape Town. Um, this was the first year we were going to go to Cape Town with the show. We still very much hope that that is an option, but for now, um, we... we yeah, we're planning on it going ahead, but we we, we can't say for certain. So, um, I, you know, a few people have asked. Um, you know, we had some great brands lined up. We have some great brands lined up. Um, assuming that, that the brands will even attend, because depending on what this looks like internationally, even if South Africa can go ahead and we can have the event, we might find that brands can't participate or won't come. So, yeah, uh, give us till the end of the month, and then we will give you a definitive answer. Um, just watch our channels, watch our newsletter, and we will let people know. <clears throat> um, how do you rate Conor McGregor's whiskey label proper number 12? That's from Mitch. Um, I should bring someone else up for this, uh, Neil Gary. Um, I'm not, personally, I'm, I'm not a fan. I don't, you know, it's it's fine. Um it's a it's a, you know very kind of well priced Irish blend. Uh, I think it's all about the the hype of the of the brand. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know for me it personally doesn't kind of hit the spot. Um, but it, it's you know it's been quite popular. He's obviously quite a character. Uh, and um, yeah, as long as you, you know if you bought a bowl, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, but uh, I don't have a bowl in my whiskey cupboard. Um, it's just, I tried it and it wasn't something I needed to bring home to drink. <clears throat> um, if the whiskey show happens, I'll be there. Uh, as somebody says, Emil says, <laughs> pure swill, I think is referring to Conor McGregor's whiskey. So uh, there you have an, an, an alternative opinion. Again, whiskey subjective. Um, what are your thoughts on the General E.H. Taylor straight rye? I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, of the General E.H. Taylor. Um, I'm actually going to see, Gary, are you around? Um, I know people would like to see Gary on, on screen, Gary. Um, oh, there's two Garys. I'm not sure which Gary I'm bringing up. I'm putting an invite out to a Gary. I'm hoping it's Gary Wadmore from Whiskey Brother. Um, let's see. I've sent out an invite. Uh, the general EH Taylor stuff is really good, though. I like that rye a lot. Uh, we have a bottle at the bar. We've had a few bottles come to the shop. Um, very good drinking. Uh, that small batch bourbon is also really good. Um, uh, Andrew says he agrees with Emil. He wouldn't say that to his face, though. Um, I appreciate people can see the comments, so you don't need me reading them out, but they are quite humorous. Um, any other questions? There's some questions to Andy, so I'm really sorry we didn't get to all of those questions. Um, will you get this year's Ardberg Committee release, Ardberg Day release? So the Ardberg Committee we won't get. Um, they're generally not available you know, through, re through retailers. They don't come to South Africa. Uh, the Odd Big Day release we have every year. We expect to have it. Odd Big Day has been cancelled uh, because Fashil has been cancelled. So, um, oh wait, sorry. Yeah, Fashil has been cancelled, but I think Odd Big Day may have. There may still be a release. So, I think in terms of the festivities in South Africa, uh, I think that's kind of an unknown right now. They may go ahead. They may not, depending on where we are. Um, I'm assuming there is a release coming, uh, the, the black, black, the sheep release. Um, when that becomes available internationally, we do expect to get stock later, whether it's on odd big day, you know, as planned or a bit delayed, uh, we do plan on getting some. Will you do this next week too, Mark, says Amanda. Uh, I'm more than happy to. So I guess I'm going to quickly do a poll um, that says, uh, should we do this again? And we'll just make a pimple and say yes and no. Uh, if you're still around and it's still almost 100 people, maybe give us a vote. So, if we, if we, majority of the people found this, you know, enjoyable to some degree uh, and wanted us to do it again, then we would, we would love to do it again. Um, and I see votes coming in for yes. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll try and line up somebody else. 
Um, we'll try and get another special guest appearance and then definitely give uh, maybe Gary or we'll get Valentine involved and uh, they can chat to everyone as well. We were obviously a little uh, apprehensive is not the word, but I guess just, you know, cautious. We didn't know how this one would turn out. We didn't know what the reception would be like. Um, it seems like it's been well received and we've, you know, we're 34 minutes over and we still have nearly 100 people watching. So uh, thank you guys. Um, you know, and it made perfect sense to just do more of a broadcast so you could watch. Now that, you know, there's, you know it's, the formalities are over, I kind of wish there was more of a, you know, more interaction going on. Um, but uh, we'll change that. I'll be more prepared for next week and we'll, we'll bring on some other people. Um, I invited Gary. And I don't think he's around. Uh, Neil, are you still around? I bet you Neil's not around. Uh, to be fair, he does have, uh, he does have another one. And... Um, I'm going to invite Neil up. Green screen. Oh, um, sorry, guys. It's not working. Okay, Neil's not, uh, not around anymore. Um, that's all good. All right. Uh, Val, is Valentine around? I didn't check if Valentine's around. Hey, Valentine. So, watching Val, I'm going to I'm gonna bring you up so you can say hi to everybody. I wanted to, so I did want to bring up Val earlier, but I am. Um, the time goes really quickly and it's actually you know, in terms of scheduling. So I, um, I, yeah, I've invited Val up now. Let's see if he's, uh, he's around. Uh, if you don't know, Valentine Maseko is part of the Whiskey Brother family. He is the bar manager for the Whiskey Brother bar. Um, uh, I see Foey saying Val is around. Thanks for watching. Um, Michelle's obviously commenting on Neil about uh, it's difficult to keep him away from the laptops. Uh, no, it's difficult to keep them away. Hey, Val, how you doing? Hey, Mark, how you doing? I'm good. Nice to see you. Yeah, great to see you, man. How's good. the lockdown I'm... treating you? Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, uh, like everyone, right? Uh, doing okay. Eating way too much pasta and, and rice and, um, and noodles, but uh, drinking whiskey. And thankfully, we're all good this side. How about you and the family? Yeah, all good. Doing a little bit of schoolwork, but... Uh making sure that I'm having a dram in between. So cheers. Nice. Cheers. That's a, that's a fat dram. What's uh, what's in that glass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is my bottle here. Just having, you know, a trusty old Glen Dronach 12. Okay. Very nice. Uh, we've got some guys saying hi to you, which is awesome. Um, yeah. Is the, is the family all good? How's the boys? Yeah. Boys are good. Can't wait to get back to work. I mean, I'm missing all the guys from the bar. Uh, yeah. Everyone who's still online, guys, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, Mark is going to do this again next week so that we can get to chat to you. And I uh, hope you're keeping safe. Nice. How was uh, how was the the show for you, Val? Was it uh, was it was it watchable? Yeah, it, it was pretty good. It was pretty okay. good. I, I think it's something that we should definitely uh, you know do over and over again if we keep on getting the number of people who actually tune in. Awesome. Yeah, cool. I think yeah. so. I mean, we, we wanted to do it. You were there when we did that uh, at the bar the one day when we started doing some filming. Um, but uh, yeah. you know, we didn't really, it, it actually, you know, it, it takes a lot of time and resources. Um, and usually we don't have the time. Now we're just locked up at home. Um, there's no excuse. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great chance to actually do this. Yeah. Nice. Um, I've got Charles here complaining about my poor. He says my poor is too much.
Hi right, guys, I hope uh, everyone can still uh, see me or hear me. Um, I'm having a terrible connection on my side. Um, someone sent a question about my collection. Sadly, my collection has gone uh, down uh, significantly. You know, I'm still trying to build it up at the moment. Um, I drank quite a few and I flipped quite a few, you know, that's part of the game. So, uh, Hopefully, I can get to a hundred pretty soon again. Uh, someone else also asked about my uh, Holy Grail. Uh, probably my most prized possession right now is a Long road, Cap Frank. Back online. Yeah, I'm hey, back online. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, somehow I dropped. But I'm glad you were here to carry the torch. Thanks. Yeah, I was fumbling a little bit. Were you were you uh, guys, uh, Yeah, so someone asked me which uh, uh bottle do I have at the moment that I prize the most? Uh, it's nothing, you know, exciting. It's just a, a long row red, uh, the Pinot Noir. It's a pretty good dram. My first bottle of long row that I, I actually got was a long row red Cap Frank. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed that dram. I think that's the whiskey that actually made me fall in love with anything that says long row. Uh, nice. um, so it's a good dram. I'm trying, I'm trying very hard not to open the, the Pinot Noir, the last bottle that I have, but I think the test will win eventually. <laughs> All right. Um, Val, thanks for joining us. Um, we'll do this again next week and we'll, we'll bring you back. All right. Cheers, guys. Right. Hope to see All you right, again well. soon. Cheers. We'll speak to you soon. Stay safe. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, I so uh, apologies everyone, I dropped, but I, I'm gonna take that as a good opportunity just to say goodbye. Um, we still have quite a, we still have 70 odd people watching, which is awesome, but uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll spare you from more of me. And uh, just on behalf of the Whiskey Brothers team, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your interest. Um, we really wish everyone out there well and hope you're staying safe and healthy. Um, um, yeah, the website's still up and running. Watch the space. We'll be loading the new Adelphi's. We'll probably be loading that new Port Charlotte. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to get your orders in, you're welcome to. We'll have them to you as soon as we can. And uh, we really appreciate the support. It's so nice to see so many names, so many familiar names joining us. Uh, Michelle, uh, cheers. Hope you and Ryan are well. Um, yeah, just uh, it's awesome. It's, it's, you know, it's it's as good a substitute. It's a pretty good substitute for you know, for what we usually do. We can't do those things, sadly, but uh, at least we can do this and connect with everyone. So uh, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep keep dramming. And uh, yeah, thanks very much, guys. We'll, we'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. Cheers.